Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to program a PID instruction in Rockwell Automation Studio 5000. For this video, we're going to be using one of our Compact Logics trainers and we're going to be using Industrial Concepts PID trainer. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments, especially with this PID series, your questions could easily be next week's automation topic. Now, if you're coming into the middle of this video series, look down in the description. We have a link to this series where we've already talked about, one, we've done a general overview of the PID trainer and ours and how we've interfaced them. We've also talked about manual control and why sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't on off control and most importantly we've already scaled our level in our basic on off exercise and that's where we're going to pick this video up so the goal of this video is really just to get a working pid instruction because i know a lot of you are just like hey i just want to throw the pid in there and i think i can take it from there and that's great and after that we're going to take some time and really start chopping this PID up and understanding it. So first thing, let's go to our main task, main program, main routine, and let's delete that rung out that we were using for that on off control in our last video. And then let's go to our PID task, PID program and PID routine. And this is where we had done our scaling for our analog input. Now on our process tab, we want to bring down that PIDE instruction, which is our enhanced PID. And then we're going to go ahead and bring down some of the inputs here. So we're going to bring down an input reference for our process variable. We're going to bring down an input reference for our set point variable. And actually for future videos, let's bring one down for our prog prog request. And one more down for our probe auto request. And then on our output side, let's bring one down for our CVEU. Okay, so our process variable is the thing that we're trying to make the output force to be in a certain spot or our input. So I want my level to be, let's say it's six inches. So our process variable is this level and we've already scaled it. It's in this SCL instruction right above level in inches. So let's put that here. And then our SP probe, that is the set point that we're wanting. And we're going to create a tag for it. So we're going to make, let's call it level set point. And then we'll create a new one and it'll be a real. And then we don't always have to actually use tags in these. And that's one reason I'm bringing these down for now. We're going to actually use these to do some things in later videos. But for now, we're just going to put a one on our probe probe request and on our probe auto request. And then we have our CVEU, which is our control variable or what we're going to try to use to force that level where we want it so that's going to be our fan speed here and we're going to use a tag for this and we're going to call it pid speed command and we'll create a new variable for that it'll be a real and then we're going to view the block properties of our pid and just for starting point we do need to have something in this proportional and integral and so i'm just going to put a one in the proportional and i'm going to put a point one in the integral and then for our equation type we're going to use the dependent variable equation we'll actually have some videos later using the independent variable equation but that's it for our general configuration. Now let's go to our units and limits. And here we're giving the units some scaling so the PID isn't working in magical numbers. And so for the process variable, we have a minimum and a maximum. So where are we at at 100%? Well, we're at 12 inches and zero is going to be zero. So I'm going to put 12 inches in here. Now this will vary for your particular application. And also you have set point limits. Let's say, yeah, we can go to 12, but you never want to go over 10. 
You could put a 10 there, but I'm just going to put a 12, the same as we had there. Let's go ahead and click OK. And that should get our PID speed command putting out a value. But this is just a tag. So we do have one final step where we need to take that speed command and put it to that drive speed output. So we're going to add another scale instruction. We'll bring it down. And we're going to grab an input reference and an output reference. And yes, uh, somebody will put in the comments, yeah, I could have just put this drive output right on the PID, but we're gonna do some other things later where it's gonna become important that we have that little separation point. So we're gonna click some connectors. And then this will be that PID speed command. That's gonna be our input. So PID speed command. And then our output is going to be local colon three colon o dot channel zero data. And then we're going to need to configure this block. So we'll click the view block properties. And our PID right now is set up for zero to 100%. So that's going to be our raw min and max is zero to 100. And then our engineering units for our analog output are zero to 10,000 equals zero to 10 volts. So our engineering units max will need to be changed to 10,000. Okay, and let's go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading or creating basic programs, we have a whole series on Studio 5000. So look down in the description, I'll put a link to that. And one thing I forgot to set was the level set point. We want that at six, so that's where we're going to start at. And we can see, all right, already our value's gone up to 100. Now I don't have the trainer on yet, and that's why it's up to 100. But what I do want to show you something that we're going to talk about in a future video, is you're going to see this thing shoot way up, and then it's going to come down. So just note that for later. But let's go ahead and turn it on. Actually, it didn't shoot up too bad. So my, my guess is on proportional integral, weren't horrible. And we're, we're right at about six inches, not terribly bad. Let's just see how it does. Let's close this valve and all right, it drops down. All right, so it's definitely sluggish as a PID, but it is a start. And if we open the valve up, you're gonna see it shoot up, then it's gonna sit here and try to adjust down. So, it is a functional PID. It is not a perfectly functional PID, but that'll be enough to get you going. So in upcoming videos, we are going to break this down. We're going to talk about, all right, what is the proportional part of this and what is it doing? What happens when we add that integral? In other words, what part of it is it actually fixing? And then finally, we're going to talk about, okay, how can we get a really nice PID curve? And we're going to go through some auto tuning. We're going to do some tuning based off observations. We're going to go through how to add some manual control through it. Just a whole lot of good content coming up. So make sure you're subscribed and yeah, please hit that like button down there. Till next time. Hey, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.